Good evening, Internet. Hope that you are doing well. We are back for another night of strange and scary games. Uh, before we get into it, I wanted to go through my new backdrop. I finally got everything set up the way that I wanted it. So you can see over here, we've got the alien and the predator. We've got the limit configuration. Uh, we've got some girls from Elden Ring. We've got Ronnie and Melina. Uh, we've got Saber Spark and Niao from Slay the Spire. We've got the Lament Configuration, we've got Michael Myers, we've got You'll Float 2, the classic Pennywise quote or threat. Uh, we have uh, my books, so Red Hats and Black Masks and In, this, in the Shadows of My Mind. Uh, we've got the Area X Trilogy, uh, Authority, Acceptance, Annihilation. Uh, we've got the new Cthulhu Reader number 2, which I found at Half Price Books recently. Uh, we've got a print that my friend Harlow did. Uh, if you guys read my story, The Blanking Out of Boxes, uh, it was one of my Halloween stories over on Medium. Uh, Harlow did the illustrations for that story. Um, this print says, Blood and Pennies Taste the Same. Uh, it has the name on the back, but I never actually remember the name. Uh, you should check Harlow out, though. Uh, we've got some Junji Ito over here. We've got Bigfoot, uh, Elm Street, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which way am I going? There we are. And then we've got uh, Freddy over here. So yeah, that's my backdrop, and that'll probably be my backdrop moving forward, unless I find something else that I like or would like to trade something out. Um, I know that I have uh, one of my friends from Kentucky. I have their book or her book. Um, so I, I've got to go by my office and pick that up, and then I'll add that to the bookshelf as well. Uh, yeah, that'll be it going forward. I was putting my seat down because my feet are hurting and because I've been working all day. Uh, and I remembered that I also had some on the bottom shelf too. So I've got, hello Clarice. And I have the Kira mug. So that will be my backdrop when I am sitting down as well. Uh, yeah, there's other books in there. If you ever want to talk books, I am always happy to do that. Um, and we, yeah. Let's get into the game for today. Uh, there we go. All right. So I've actually played the first chapter of Faith before. Uh, I made a recording of it, but there was clipping on the recording. So throughout the whole video, there was that crackling sound. Uh, Gary loves you. Um, and I didn't want to subject you guys to that because I know that I always get annoyed with that sound. I didn't want you guys to get annoyed with that sound. So we're going to go through chapter one again, and then we will go through chapters two and three later this week. September 21st, it's been one year since I first went inside that house. I have to finish what I started. What I am about to do has not been approved by the Vatican. Walk by faith, not by sight. I don't like that. Darkness surrounds thee. I don't like that. Warning, jank. You might check that out. Yeah, yeah. Oh. We're in it. All right, then. Have you forgotten already? This forest has a mind of its own. If you get lost, you could always try remembering where you've been. Pressing the escape key or the start button is a good place to start. So, space, exits. Uh -uh. 
That didn't seem very fair. Why? Why is he spawning like that? I'm running, I'm running, I'm running, I'm running, I'm almost there, I'm almost there, okay. I don't like that thing. Oh, hi, dear. Where is our house? I remember there being a house in this game. There we go. Okay. It's locked. It's locked. Hate that for us. Is this anything? It doesn't appear to be anything. Please don't attack me. The Martin's house lies about a hundred yards off of Snake Meadow Hill Road. There is almost no driveway. Trees jut out in the middle of a gravel path that is mostly covered in grass. It was difficult to find the house, especially since it was already dark when we arrived. Father Allred seems to know where he was going. He simply drove straight ahead until he arrived at the house. In the headlights, I saw an old shed off to the right of the path. Father Allred explained that he would rather perform the exorcism away from the house, but the Martins had insisted that Amy remain inside. He complained that having the family present makes it difficult to proceed with elements of the right that may seem harsh to the layperson. Please don't attack me. I saw that. Ah, oh, there it goes. Ah! I asked you very politely not to do that. Alright, I forgot about the cross. So let's try using the cross on this thing. It worked. Alright. Bob, the kids and I miss you more every day. The twins and Amy have started their next school year here at home. Amy keeps asking when she's going to be allowed to go to real school. I think she's getting cabin fever. The twins are having no problem occupying their time. Yesterday they came in with their hands covered in blood. I guess they found a dead deer and thought it would be a good idea to touch it. I think we might have a coyote problem, because when I went out with them to look at the dead deer, it was a pretty gruesome sight. All this just a day after the twins' birthday party. Can't wait till you come home. I guess that's the mom. So this is a dead deer. I don't really see it. But all right. Are you haunted? You're not haunted. Did the Wendigo thing, did that just kill that deer? That wasn't very nice. There's a fox around here, isn't there? You're haunted, okay. Mr. Martin, it has taken longer than expected registering the markers on your property as a historical cemetery. Our office has had difficulty identifying who is buried there. The inscriptions on the gravestones are written in a language that we cannot identify. I've sent the gravestone rubbings to some of my peers at the University of Connecticut. I will reach out to you when I get, ho uh, get a response from them. All the best. Daryl Henderson, State of Connecticut Historical Society. All 
I remember there being a fox around here. I'm gonna get eaten by the creature. There it is, okay. Are you haunted? You're not haunted. Chaos reigns. That's a reference to uh, Antichrist with Willem Dafoe. It's so polite of the creature to just leave me alone when I walk to another screen. Back in the house. Mr. and Mrs. Martin greeted us at the front porch. Mr. Martin led us downstairs to the basement, explaining that Amy was down there in restraints. I felt for him. There was guilt and shame in his voice. Amy was in the very back of the attic in a chair, perfectly calm, staring at us. It is hard to describe the look on her face. Is not the kind of look a child gives you. She's blue. Ba da be ba da ba ba da 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 da. Uh. We're haunted. Our mirror's haunted. That doesn't work. All right. Uh, TV's haunted. Nope. Okay. Plants haunted? You're not haunted. Are you haunted? You're haunted. Uh, neat. That's one of the twins. Saw a cultist and a shadow person. All right, can't do that. Uh, that's the basement. We want to go to the attic, right? That subtle blood trail leads to the attic. All right, we can't go in there yet. Uh, is the rubber ducky haunted? The rubber ducky is haunted. I don't feel safe in my own home anymore. I hear voices outside around the house at night. I don't let the twins go out in the woods to play because I'm afraid of what's out there. The house itself the house itself feels stressed, distorted, slanted somehow. It's like I'm walking through a carnival funhouse. Amy's condition has only gotten worse. I can't stand to be around her, and I don't know why. She just doesn't seem like herself anymore. I want to take her to the doctor, but I can't leave the boys here. I find that the phone stops working throughout the day, and now I can't seem to find my car keys. Thank God Bob comes home tomorrow. I really like the, um... The dripping faucet. That's a really cool effect. Is this a hallway? That's not a hallway. Why does the toilet get its own little alcove? Toilet's not haunted. I guess I was the only one who thought to check the attic. When I got up there, it was freezing cold. I found Amy standing in the back, looking straight at me like when I first met her downstairs. We spoke briefly, although it was frustrating to talk to her. Or it. I experienced a bit of deception from the demon. During our conversation, she uttered my mother's first name. In other instances, she, put, she, she spoke perfect Latin. I called for help from the others, but nobody came. So I raised my crucifix and began the ride again.
When do we get to exercise the moon? Bob must be stationed in the Middle East somewhere. Bob must be stationed somewhere in the Middle East, because he sent over this weird-looking doll for Amy's birthday. I'll ask Amish about it next time we have book club. She looks like she could be from over there. Gross. Amy didn't seem excited to see the doll. I think she would rather have a phone instead. Or maybe seeing a baby doll makes her feel self-conscious about working at the clinic. She works at the abortion clinic. Got it. Any of you haunted? Simon says you're definitely haunted, right? None of you are haunted. Okay. So this is the twins' room. I am impressed by the map of the world. Uh done all in pixel art. Are you haunted? You're not haunted, okay. Guess let's go check the basement. Are you haunted? No, okay. It is really eerie with no uh with no music. It's kind of impressive how um how eerie it is when it's so low quality. Not like low quality, but like uh low visuals. Amy's parents could not endure witnessing the proceedings of the rite for long. Mrs. Martin was hysterical. And the thing that was inside Amy was feeding off of the fear. Father Allred asked me to take the Martins upstairs. I was physically worn out, but managed to get them back up to the stairs into the kitchen. Amy was screaming, Mother! Mother! the whole time. Finally, I got them to sit down with me at the kitchen table. After a few minutes, we couldn't hear much of anything down in the basement, so I went down to check on things. I found a Father Allred laying on his back, unconscious, with his arms spread out wide. Amy was not in the chair. Hi there. She is here. She is here. She is where? Ah, shit. Mortis. Mortis. When I played the first time, she was always to the left, so I went left first. She is here. She's here. wasn't fair. She spawned on top of me. Spawn camping. She is here. She is here. This way seemed better. She's going to be by the beds. She's going to come from the top. see you. You failed me. It's going to come from the center. I can see you. I can see you. Didn't catch that. I'm 
coming from the top, oh, coming from the bottom, at Ranner. I did not feel confident about that one. Where's she at? Kill me. What are we doing? There's something down here, right? Nothing. She was up there. How many times do I have to do this? Alright, that answers that question. The bike's not haunted. Molly, the church might contact you in a few days to tell you what their version of what happened to me. To tell you their version of what happened to me. I want you to hear it from me first. A year ago, I was involved in the exorcism of Amy Martin. What they said in the papers about what happened isn't true. She, my superior, father, with, when I confronted her, she managed to cut the power to the house and her own parents with their own. I have to go back to that house. The nightmares I'm having are real. She's still there, waiting for me. I can still help her. If I don't come back, know that I love you. That I'm sorry. John. Oh, the boss fight. If I remember correct, you don't have a face. See? No face. Face can't be pretty if you don't have a face. Ah! Forgot about that. You thought. Keep missing which one is the real her. Ah. Once again, asking how long I have to do this for. Ah. 
Am I doing any damage? There we go. Uh, shit. I'm wrong way. Mortis. There's the arm. One, two, three. One, two, three. that the pattern had changed. This game is oddly difficult. Changed. Okay. Oh, hi. to say about her jumping out the window? Why? Uh, you've got a face. Why do you have a face? Don't like that. All right, I think that we're in the ending phase. So let's go through all Actually, before we do that, let's do the let's do the boss fight. So I found this out by accident. Gun with one bullet. Uh, I was looking for all of the endings, and I found this. One. And we have to do the gun with one bullet every time. And of course, you can't press space on that or else it fires. Two. Last one. Three. That freaked me out the first time it happened to me. Got him. Whew. 
Secret boss fight. October 23rd, 1986. Dear Dr. McGlashan, it has been 30 days since the beginning of my treatment here at Yale Psychiatric Institute. Dr. Spinell, who has been so patient with me, has helped me understand my afflictions and has helped me to find a way to move forward and accept the truth. With Dr. Spinell's help, I have come to accept what really happened in September at the Martin family residence. I accept that what happened was not the result of any supernatural phenomenon, but rather the desperate actions of a young girl driven to violence by her dogmatic parents in an old church rituals that are thought to, be, to drive out evil. I am happy to report that since accepting the truth, my nightmares have ceased, and I now enjoy peace of mind that I have not felt since the incident. Given my progress since first coming here, I respectfully request my release from Yale Psychiatric Institute, contingent upon follow-up appointments with Dr. Spinell in the future. Sincerely, John Ward. Uh, okay. Erdorf, do we really need that every time? All right. So let's go get an ending. And we're going to get all of the endings, so. Rip. Was she still possessed? Did we just commit murder? It seems bad if we just uh, killed a person. Nothing. All right, let's get back in our car and leave. Ending one of five, murderer. Police arrest man accused of murdering missing girl. A New York man is in custody after he confessed to the murder of a sterling girl who had been missing. John Ward of Palmyra was pulled over on Snake Meadow Hill Road last night after a state trooper reported hearing a gunshot. The officer thought it might be poachers. The officer said Ward was acting nervous and suspicious after being pulled over. When, get, when questioned, that looks like guest, sorry. When questioned, Ward reportedly said, I've killed her. According to the police report, the officer called for backup after Ward became increasingly upset, saying repeatedly that there was a demon inside her. Ward was taken to Sterling Police Headquarters for further questioning. Ward then confessed to authorities that he shot and killed Amy Martin, a 17-year-old girl, who had been missing for nine days after escaping from a mental institution. After a brief search, police located Amy's body in the woods near the now-abandoned Martin home. In addition to receiving a gunshot wound to the stomach, Amy showed in injuries suggesting that she had been thrown out of a second-story window of the house. An officer who helped recover the body told reporters that Amy's face had been mutilated in a very brutal manner. Ward was found dressed as a priest when he was pulled over. It is suspected that he impersonated a priest to gain his victim's trust after Catholic authorities in Rome confirmed that Ward was not an ordained minister. The rest of the article is missing. All right. Let's go get the rest of the endings. So when I was doing my first playthrough, I was wondering uh, what could be an ending, and I went into the living room and shot the TV. That is not an ending. And I kind of wish that it was a um, poltergeist-type ending, where you shoot the TV and a hand comes out. I guess that's what the mirror is for. What's up, buddy? So this guy scared me. 
Uh, if you walk near him, he makes a loud noise and then he runs away. So what you gotta do is you gotta stand behind this fence and just shoot him. I don't even know who this guy is. I don't know why he's here. Is he a policeman? Is he a cultist? No idea. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him I will trust. I shall not be afraid. Rip. Ending 2 of 5, Father and Son. Esteemed Cardinal Gifford, with all due respect, you cannot grasp the importance of the work I am doing for young Michael without being present here. Michael needs my help now more than ever. In the past few weeks, I have made great progress with Michael's affliction. Nevertheless, whatever darkness is inside of him fights back with increasing ferocity. We must not let up the fight against the enemy of such a critical, at such a critical time. There is another reason why I dare not return Michael to his family, nor let them see him. The darkness inside him afflicts his soul, but it also causes a terrible strain on his body, so that there may be no mistaking what I mean. I have enclosed a photograph of young Michael during one of our sessions. The photograph is missing. Is that a Mike Myers reference? So young Michael is the creature from the forest? That's interesting. Yes, a gun with one bullet. So the first time I came through here, I thought that the fox was dead because it's not talking to me anymore. But it's still alive. So you just do this. Now he's dead. Uh, hi there. <laughs> ending three of five, the offering. I like to call that the uh, hereditary ending. Hello, Amy. I am sorry to hear about your parents' decision. It is hard for people to trust what they do not understand. I know you are only 17, but you are clearly an adult and you are able to handle your own life. Do not let your mom and dad stop you from following your dreams. If there is anything I can do to help you, just let me know. We are having a get-together at the clinic Saturday night, and I would love for you to stop by. We still consider you a part of the team, even if your mom and dad do not. We hope to see you there. Gary. Gary loves you. We need to do the deer ending. And then we get to do my favorite ending. What's up, buddy? Rip. Venison tonight. Why does the deer know karate? Ending 4-5, the hunter. Unidentified body discovered near wrecked car. The site of a deadly car accident was discovered along the road near Sterling this morning, along with the body of a person who has not yet been identified. At 6 a.m. this morning, a resident called to report an accident along Snake Meadow Hill Road. The driver of a silver sedan had swerved off the road and struck a tree. 
The spokesman for the police com commented that the body appeared to have been dragged several yards away from the car deeper into the woods after having been ejected from the front windshield. It was noted that the body had been mangled beyond re recognition. Investigators suspect that this was probably the work of coyotes. Police also noted that parts of the cleaned white-tailed deer were found in the trunk of the car. From a white-tailed deer, a hunter typically gets 75 pounds of meat. However, it appears the victim was of the accident was only able to carry 25 pounds back to the car. All right. It is time for my favorite ending. And then I think I'm going to go see if I can find the rest of the notes. Because it looks like I'm missing three of them. That escalated quickly. I will say of the war, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him I will trust. I shall not be afraid of the terror in the night, nor the evil that walketh in darkness. Because I have made the war my refuge. Because I have set my love upon him. Therefore will he deliver me. I shall call upon him and he will answer me. He will be with me in trouble. He will deliver me and God. I just want the ending. I don't need a sermon. I can't explain what happened at that house. I can only have faith that I did the right thing. Ending 5 of 5, when faith endures. Police, animal experts investigating chupacabra remains near Sterling. Sterling PD is enlisting the help of local animal experts from the University of Connecticut after the remains of an unidentified animal were found near Sterling. The remains of an animal, which some residents are calling a chupacabra, were discovered on Snake Meadow Hill Road by a motorist yesterday. The animal had apparently been struck by a vehicle, and parts of its carcass were scattered across the road. Police say they initially investigated the gruesome scene because the motorist who discovered the remains had told them they appeared to be of a person. After arriving at the scene, police concluded that the remains were of some kind of animal. As a matter of public safety, we want to be sure about what exactly we're dealing with here, said a Sterling police spokesman. This is clearly not a deer or a coyote. If it's a mountain lion or exotic pet that escaped from its owners, or an animal with rabies, we need to know about it. Animal experts attached to the investigation would not speculate about what kind of animal had been found, although they commented that the animal was hairless, anemic, and apparently suffered from the rickets, a vitamin D deficiency that appears in animals and children who have not received enough sunlight. So one thing that I wanted to say kind of annoys me. If you come up to the girl and you try to like comfort her, it just moves you back. Uh, I wish that there was like a uh, comforting the girl ending because clearly she's not possessed anymore. Whatever demon was in her is no longer in her. It says the bed frame near the sheet and doll in the basement. That one. I'm pretty sure I got that one in my first playthrough. Dear Amy, thanks for writing. It really brightened my day hearing from you. In your letter, you asked what's the weirdest thing I've seen as a missionary. Yeah, I've, I've read this one before. Uh, in your letter, you ask what's the weirdest thing I've seen as a missionary. The area we're working in has a lot of folks who practice Quimbamba. It's what you might call a pagan religion. It's kind of a mix of Catholic and African religions. One of the saints they worship is San La Morte, or Saint Death. Yesterday, we talked to a boy about 15. When we asked him if he had ever prayed, he said, No, but I have prayed to San La Muerta. He told us about the time when he stayed over at his cousin's house, and according to him, they prayed to some figures of San La Muerta, and the figures made things in the house move around. He got real quiet and scared looking after that. We told him he could pray to God and that God wouldn't make him 
feel scared like that. We invited him to church, but he hasn't come yet. I need to wrap this letter up and get back to work. See you in four months. Layden. All right, we got that one. Pretty sure we got the other one in the basement. Let's go check real quick. There's no way over there. That was close. How many times do I have to do this? I think the Chupacabra has figured out what I'm trying to do. And now doesn't want to give it to me. That was four. Is that five or six? Ah, oh, damn it. Can you please give me the note? Please give me the note. I think it was supposed to kill the deer, but it looked like the programming messed up somehow. That was weird. So Michael is just out in the um, out in the forest eating deer. Doesn't seem very sanitary. Oh my god. Run, dear, be free, be safe. Isn't it giving me the note? I just want the fucking note. Oh my god. Erdorf, what is this? Is this RNG? Am I doing this in RNG? I don't want the twins. I want the monster. What is the trigger? Is there a trigger for the monster?
How many times do I need to do this? Yeah, go on willingly. How many times do I have to do this? There we go. Okay, thank you. Christ Jesus. Father Garcia, you are hereby instructed to release Michael Davies from your care and return him to his home immediately. Mr. and Mrs. Davies have already been contacted by our office. A representative of the church is currently en route to their home to discuss compensation in return for their discretion. You will meet our representative there and accompany him back to Rome. Cardinal Gifford. All right, so... What do we got? We got Faith Chapter 1. We got the starting screen. Have you forgotten already? We got that. Uh, we got the well. We got the dead tree. We got the puddle. We got the pile of bones. Did we get the graveyard? I don't know if we got the graveyard on this one. So we need to go back to the graveyard. Uh, we got the stone circle, we got the shed. Uh, number 10. It's the main foyer. Got that one. One in the kitchen. Rubber ducky, you're the one. You make bath time lots of fun. I don't feel safe in my own home anymore. I hear voices. We already read this. Okay. Amy's bedroom. So yeah, the doll isn't here. We got that. We got that. We need the attic next. 
Okay, so that one is based on how many times you exercise her. Okay. Got it. Understood. Attic passageway. Got that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. What was eleven? Portrait. We didn't get the portrait. Got it. So we're missing 19 and 20. First screen of the second floor. There it goes. This is the ceremony for opening the X. Let no brother or sister utter it. Prepare the X. Use the right index finger to draw the signs of the X on the floor. Bring an impure vessel to the signs of the X. Let a brother or sister drink X at each sign of the X. Carve the face of the X. The blood that fills the opening is the new X. Let seven X be taken from their mothers and lowered into the X. Open... No. Upon the offering of the seventh X, the X will emerge from the X. This is the second death. All right. Yes, a gun with one bullet. First try. All right, that is all of the notes. So let me go in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. All right, we've done it. Make sure that our save file is done. 20 out of 20. Read collected note or read collected notes. Blah. 20 out of 20. We got all of them. So that is all for Faith Chapter 1. We'll be back for more Faith in the next video. Where is my camera? There we are. We'll be back for more faith in the next video. Um, yeah, uh, I like that game. It's kind of impressive how such like a low visual um, style can invoke that kind of dread, uh, which is really cool, especially when like the sound cuts out and you're like, oh, what's what's going to happen? Um, I love the atmosphere. There's like nothing in the game and yet you still kind of feel... Uh, that kind of tension in your chest. Um, one of the complaints that I had with the uh, the fights, the uh, um, the first fight with the girl, is that um, it was difficult to pick up on her patterns, um, and it was difficult for the uh, the rune attack. So I didn't get hit by it in this in this uh, video. But when I first played through it, I didn't realize that she had runes coming off of her in a little uh, Nautilus shell, um, what's it called, Fibonacci spiral. Um, I think that if there was more uh, indication that that was an attack and not just something that was happening on the floor, that would be good. Um, and when you get hit by it, there should be kind of an effect around the character. 
Uh, John should have like a, a red shell around him or something like that to show that he's gotten hit by that rune. Um, so that would help just with visual uh, identification of what's going on. Um, other than that, I really liked it. Uh, I would have liked to see more endings. I would have liked to see like the poltergeist ending where you shoot the TV and something happens. Um, I would have liked to see an ending where you could like hug the girl and be like, you know, it's over now. And then there's like a, a redemption kind of uh, ending. Uh, I know that that would have been more work and that might have been like not something that you were trying to do thematically. But I think that it would have been a good addition to the the faith chapter one. Uh, so, yeah, that's my thoughts on it. Um, I'm going to get out of here. I will see you guys some other nights. Uh, I love you. Have a good night.